take a look at properties of limits, okay? So the statement, the limit of f at x as x approaches a equals l, says that the values of f at x become closer and closer to the number l as x gets closer and closer um, to the number a, such that x does not equal a. So it becomes closer and closer and closer, but it never actually equals a. Okay, this means that when finding the limit of f at x as x approaches a, there's no need to consider the actual number at a. And we talked about that in 1.4. We talked about how we need to consider the limit from the left and the right, but not actually at a. Okay, so at that number, it doesn't actually need to be defined. I always write like this, from the left, from the right, but at doesn't matter, okay? So there could be either be a whole or there could be, or it could be defined, but it doesn't actually matter. The only thing that matters is the behavior near A. So again, left and right. Okay, so here's a couple of properties and we're gonna take a look at these and we're gonna embed them into the actual, um, in the actual questions, but just to go over this. So if we have a constant, the limit is just the constant, okay? If you think about it, if you have f at x is a constant, then it's just a horizontal line, okay? Um, the limit of x equals a. So whatever this a is, because when we sub it in here, it's just, it's just a, okay? So if we want the limit of some function plus or minus another function, we just have to take the limit of the first thing, the limit of the second thing, and then add them. Okay. If we want, if we have a function that's multiplied by a constant, we can actually pull that constant out, find the limit, and then multiply the limit by the constant. Okay. Now, if we have two functions that are multiplied, we can just find the limit of the first function, find the limit of the second function, and then multiply them. Okay, um, if we have two functions that are divided, we can just find the limit of the first and divide it by the limit of the second, as long as that, um, that second function does not equal zero. And then if we have a limit of a function raised to the n, we just find the limit of the function and then raise that to the n. Okay, so pretty tedious, but let's actually put those into play now. Okay, so the first thing that we have to know how to do is just simply plug that, um, plug in what, what x approach is. So in the first case, the limit of 3x squared plus 4x minus 1 as x approaches 2. Okay, we know that this right here is a polynomial. Polynomial. I mean, this is very easy because it's x squared and it opens up, so it's going to look something like this. Okay. I don't know exactly where the zeros are or where the vertex is, but it doesn't matter. We know that this is, since this is continuous, we don't actually have to come in from the left and the right. We just have to simply plug in. So 3, 2 squared plus 4, 2 minus 1. So we have 3, 4 plus 8 minus 1, 12 plus 8, which is 20 minus 1, which is 19. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 f at x equals 19. Okay, now the second one. We always test. The number one thing to do is to test if we can just plug right in because you're going to save a lot of time. So plug this in. Let's see what happens. 1 cubed plus 3, 1 plus 1. We get 1 minus 5 is negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 1 is 6. Okay, therefore the limit's negative 1 over 6. So that works out too. Now let's try to sub in 5. We've got 5 squared over 5 minus 1. So we have 25. And I'm going to break that root up because remember, when we have a root of an entire uh, fraction, it's just the root of the top divided by a root of the bottom. Okay. So we have 5 over 2. So those all work, and those all work very, very nicely. Now, sometimes the limit cannot be found by direct substitution. Okay, so what this is going to look like is if you substitute um, the 
the limit, like, so like the limit as X approach is three in this case right here. Let me, let me get a color. Let me get, let me change the color. Let's go purple. Okay. X approach is three. What's going to happen is we're going to find that three squared minus two X minus three over three minus three. We're actually going to get zero over three or sorry, zero over zero. And what zero over zero is, is indeterminate form. Okay. And at this point, what we have to do is we have to look at like an equivalent fraction to use or so, uh, an equivalent expression, sorry, function. Yeah, so an expression to use. Okay, so as soon as we sub it in and we get zero over zero, you cannot leave it like that. So in this case, let's write the limit as x approaches three and let's actually factor the top. So on the top, we get two numbers that multiply to negative three and add to negative two, I get negative three and one. Okay, so x plus one. Okay, in this case, we get x minus three, x plus one over x minus three. Cancel those out. Now, all we're doing is actually dealing with the limit as x approaches three of x plus one. Now, we can just sub that straight in. Three plus one is four. So the limit is four. Now, we know from advanced functions that if we cancel a factor in the top and the bottom, there's a hole at x equals three. That's fine. It doesn't matter if there's a hole because all we're looking at is the limit as x approaches three from the left and x approaches three from the right. It doesn't actually have to exist at that number. So that's okay. So in this case, the limit is still four. Okay, let's take a look at an example with a radical. So if we sub in zero plus one minus one over zero, we get zero over zero. Therefore, it's indeterminate form. Therefore, we cannot use just a straight substitution. Let's instead, as soon as we see a radical, we want to consider the conjugate, okay? So let's multiply this by x plus one and then plus one. So let's consider the conjugate, okay? Let's go limit as x approaches zero. So x plus one, root x plus one times root x plus one is just itself. I'm not doing the middle two terms, okay? Minus one. And let's go, x, x plus one plus one. And remember this one is actually in brackets. Okay, and this works out. So we have limit as x approaches zero. So what's x plus one minus one? Those x's can, or those ones cancel out. And now we're left with those x's cancel out. So we're left with one over x plus one plus one. Now let's sub in that zero. Now it doesn't even matter if there's like, if there's an x or, in the other case, if there was an h at the bottom. Okay, root one, this is basically one plus one. So I get the limit equals one half.